Amen. Hallelujah. And God is uh, telling us, rise up. Be the people he wants us to be. Be the conquerors. And uh, he said, this is your time and hour to walk in the authority. He's called you to rise up, to rise up with miracle signs and wonders following you. And uh, wow, we uh, know that God is doing powerful, mighty things today. Um, God gave us this date many, uh, many, several years ago, actually. He gave us a series of dates. Keep our eyes upon. This happens to be one of them today. Somebody was reminding me. And uh, God has some powerful things today. Um, I'm just not exactly sure of all that the Lord is doing today, but I know He's doing some powerful things. And uh, this is an important day. And uh, so, boy, just keep your hearts open. Amen? Amen? And receive all that God has for you today. Praise the Lord. My ladies' Bible study is on Tuesday night, 6.30. Wednesday night, of course, is our regular service here. Uh, Bible study and children's ministries and so on. And uh, that's all at 6.30. And... Uh, Sounds like uh, this coming Saturday is game night here at the church. That starts at 6.30 as well. And uh, so just kind of lots of things. Today we're having a fellowship dinner after the morning service. We're celebrating November birthdays. And uh, so that's what's happening today. And uh, we invite everybody to stay. And uh, there should be plenty of food. We normally have lots of food. So I, I don't think the extra crowd is going to hurt, going to diminish the food any. And, uh, so please, please stay. Amen. Don't feel like you're intruding, uh, by staying. We love to have you stay. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And, uh, I know there'll be plenty of food. If not, the Lord will multiply it. I, Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's not an impossibility, but I'm, we normally have so much food left over that uh, we could easily handle a bigger crowd. So, praise God. So we we thank you for that, and uh, and please feel welcome to stay. We we love to have you and love to visit with uh, those of you who are visiting here this morning, and uh, so uh, be assured of that. We do have a children's church right. Uh, I guess right after following this offering here this morning. So, children's church age is what, Randy? You don't know? Three years and older? Okay. So, that's... All right. And that's in this room right adjacent on behind this window here. So, just follow the signs back there if there are those visiting who want to partake in that. You're certainly welcome to. You don't have to, but uh, they have a good time back there. And uh, so uh, go to that. Praise God. All right. I don't know. I don't think I'm missing anything. Praise the Lord. I hope you're keeping track of all that's happening on the website. Uh, as you know, we're, uh, we're broadcasting our morning services, and God is doing powerful things in spite of us. <laughs> no, really, God is doing so, just so many powerful things. It's just absolutely amazing, and uh, it's just exciting to see what God is doing, the miracles, the genuine miracles that are taking place, and uh, people are being touched and, and blessed and inspired and encouraged and uh, what else could I say I mean it's just happening I, and we give him praise for it amen praise God I mean everything from people getting jobs you know to mirac miraculous healings and so on it's just uh, it's wonderful what God is doing and uh, we thank him for it amen praise God and generally you can read about those answers on the uh, on the guest page of our website generally people uh they all come and tell us what happened during the preaching of the word and so on. So, uh, so you know, we just give God praise for all he's doing. Amen. We need to come and sing this morning. Praise, honor, and glory to Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. My 
My days are filled with laughter. My heart has known your peace. I travel far, still there is far to go. Cause in my heart there is a longing to look upon your face. And where you are is where I want to be. You are my king. You are the lamb, the lion of Judah, seed of Abraham, the holy one, God's only son. You are the king of who I am. Every road I travel down, you have walked before me. May the light to shine out of darkness. But are you looking for the day when I bow before you and lay my crown at your feet? Thank you, Jason. Praise God. Hallelujah. There, now you'll be able to hear me. My voice is not as powerful this morning as normal. But God is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. If you get warm this time of year, just a caution, turn the thermostat down before you open the windows. Because it's not 68 outdoors and it defeats your purpose because the minute the air hits it over there, just more heat. Glory. We're okay now, though. Praise God for that. I'm glad that this time of the year we can't open the windows yet. Wow. Glory. Last August we had the privilege of going up to Governor. Hallelujah. And we had a large group from here went up for a mini conference, fellowship, three days. Great time. Great time. I preached two sermons up there. Wake up, Caleb, and the one that I'm going to share with you this morning that I didn't think that perhaps I'd ever be sharing here. Glory. Stepping into your miracle. Glory. Hallelujah. The text will be Joshua, the third chapter, verses 
11 through 17. And the man that wrote from England, the blind man that said he was looking for a miracle today, you're going to get it. I make that boast right now. You will receive your sight. Glory. Hallelujah. Joshua, the third chapter, verses 11 through 17. The children of Israel are standing in a familiar place. The only problem is it was 40 years ago that they stood there the first time, like a lot of Christians, back for the second round trip, when they could have made it in one trip. Their parents had stood in this very place on the brink of a breakthrough. They had a breakdown. On the brink of a breakthrough, they had a breakdown. Glory. They had a faith failure. They couldn't believe that God could do what he said he could do. They forfeited their promises. They were still children of God. Now God was still their father. Now he cared for them. He took care of them for another 40 years in the wilderness until all the doubters died off. But they died destiny poor. I'll get a hold of that. They died destiny poor. Some Christians are going to do that. Sad. They shouldn't. They never should. Glory. Hallelujah. We're seeing things. You know that Iran right now is waiting to attack Israel. Are you aware of that? Are you aware that Israel is ready to attack the only thing that's stopping her, she's not sure whether Iran has the nuke. And Iran does have the nuke because God told us so. Glory. Exciting times are happening in the world. And God's trying to get Israel to receive their Messiah that they go out when we do and don't have to stick around and go through all that terrible times. Glory. I hope there's no Christians that are going to stick around. <laughs> Amen. I heard that. It should have been a little louder. <laughs> Can you hear me okay this morning? Good. One of the greatest tragedies in life, you know, is to discover that you have a destiny, but never fulfill it. Never fulfill it. Never be what you desire to be. Never be what God's called you to be when you could. Glory. Hallelujah. I want to talk to a minute this morning to the, not the first generation, a different kind of generation. Not even really the second generation. They done good. But I want to talk to a group of people today that want to fulfill their destiny. Do you want to fulfill? There's still time. I can look out here and I know most of you. And I know some of you, the promises God has given to you. What are you waiting on? Really, what are you waiting on? Glory. God's not waiting on you. He's moving. And if we want to fulfill those things, we have to move with God. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to talk to those of you who've still got some fight left. Hallelujah. Glory. You remember Caleb, 85, he still had the fight left. Well, I love that. One of my favorite uh, boxers is in the hospital dying of cancer. And my only hope is that he knows the Lord Jesus Christ is his Lord and his Savior. I think I I think he was the greatest myself. Glory, and I've seen a lot of them, even Joe Lewis. I seen him when I was a kid. Glory. Hallelujah. Does anybody really want the promises that God has given to them? 
I mean, do you, do you really want them? Are you hungry? Are you ready to press in? Are you ready to receive the things that God has for you? I mean, God doesn't lie. If he told you he'd do it, he'll do it. Glory. Hallelujah. I wish about three of you would cry out, Give me my mountain and mean it. That's only once. I said about three times. Glory. That's four times. That's better yet. <laughs> now, if you're satisfied, you know, if you're content where you are, if nothing's bothering you, and you don't want to go any farther, then this message is not for you. It really isn't. Glory. You can sit and just enjoy it. I'm talking to that rare breed of people. That rare breed. We call them dreamers. Glory. They got a dream. We, we hear a lot with the things that are going on in the world today. Every once in a while, I have a dream we hear again. Well, do you have a dream? I hope you're a dreamer. I hope you're a dreamer that's going after your goal, going after the vision, going after the fulfillment of the things that God has already told you could do. Glory. I don't care what the obstacles are. You say, why? I know God. Amen. I know God. There's no obstacles for God. What we call impossible, He calls possible. What we call we can't do, he says, yes, you can. You can do all things in me. He says, there's nothing that you can't do. We just got to believe that we can do what he's told us we can do. That we can be what he's told us we can be. Glory. Hallelujah. Are you one of those rare breeds? Glory. Hallelujah. My grandson this week was getting some shaky words. And I told him. I had talked with him. He come to get some tables and chairs and he couldn't get away from Grandpa. I said, I've prayed. I want you to know I have prayed. And I don't care what the situation looks like. It's changed. The big boss, the big, I'm not, I mean, the one ahead of everything. He emailed him today and said, what is the problem, Dustin? What's going on? We have a God. Amen. He hasn't forgotten us. He's not weak. He's not frail. He's not asleep. He can do what he said he can do. And we're seeing this right here. Here's a group of people. Wow. Their parents have been there and their parents couldn't do it. But they're going to do it. Because they're not doubters. They're believers. Glory. I want you to know there's, there's no victory without a fight. There is no testimony without a test. There is no crown without a cross. There is no crucifixion without a resurrection. Amen. Glory. Whew. There's no healing without somebody being sick. There's no deliverance unless somebody is possessed. There's going to be battles, but we win every one. Glory. God is more than able. Glory. He's never failed me. I'm not sick. It seems like every now and then the devil wants to try to mess with my voice. He wants to shut me up. Glory, but he can't. Glory. Hallelujah. You know, you got to get through. The small trials, the small tribulations, the circumstances, everything that the devil throws at you. And you know, suddenly you find out there's a victory. 
or Joseph went to the pit. Then he went to the prison. But then he became the head of the whole country. The three Hebrew children went into the fiery furnace. But the furnace couldn't keep them. I, I preached a sermon, maybe you remember that. There's no smoke on me. Glory. <laughs> I used another illustration from another one of my favorite boxers, and I called it Robo Dope. Glory. Some of you are, you're 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 lost already, huh? <laughs> Glory. That was a young man that could just lean on the ropes and they could throw everything they wanted to throw and they couldn't hurt him. And then all at once he'd hit them and they were all, it was over. Rope-a-dope. Fooling the enemy. Glory. Hallelujah. Leading on God. Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah. The children of Israel, they're right there, they're, they're ready to receive their inheritance. They're right there at the river. The river's called Jordan. You know what Jordan means? Descender. You know what that means? The one that takes you down. Glory. That's what Jordan intended to do, was take them down. You know, I, I don't want to see the Red Sea. And I'm not interested in ever seeing that. Now, I don't want God to show me when we, when we get to heaven what it was like. I want to see the Jordan. You say, why the Jordan? Because God backed it up. It stood there like a big bowl of jelly, just shaking with all of his power, with all of his might. And the Israelites crossed on dry ground. It couldn't move. Glory. I want to see the Jordan. Glory. All the power of the devil couldn't be unleashed. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, I'll tell you. But the Jordan was standing between them and their promise. Every one of us has a Jordan. It's standing between us and our promises. Glory. Hallelujah. It depends on whether you want to be a victor, whether you want to be a champ, whether you want to be an overcomer. Your Jordan may cause you to run. Your true color may come out. Glory. Or you can really be what you say you want to be. You know, the choice is ours. Glory. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, that's exciting. You know, you can't float over your feelings. Now, feelings won't go away. You got to cross them. Glory. Hallelujah. You can't run over your past experiences, but you can conquer them. Glory. Hallelujah. Religion won't go away, but you can go through it. Glory. We got the word. That's all we need. We don't need a church name. We don't need a denomination. We don't need a fellowship. It's nice to have all those. We can be a loner. But we can go through our religion. And we can go into the presence of Almighty God. Last week we spoke about entering into the presence of Almighty God. Do you remember that? Glory. Hallelujah. The only thing that can conquer the Jordan is the living God. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. As children, they stood on the edge, and it was flood stage. We saw what flooding can do just recently in Binghamton and probably down in Norwich. Did you get some flooding down there? Glory. Oweagle. Wow. Then we look at New England states, and then they got the snowstorm on top of it. They had some Jordans. Glory. But they're going through victorious. 
<clears throat> I was telling Dennis, I got to listen to this general last night on the news. He just got fired. He just got fired for speaking the truth. They asked him, what do you think Iran is about to do? He said, they're worse fanaticals than the Christians. He said, they believe with all their heart, with all their heart, thank you, that we're at the end time, that they're, they, what do they call him? He's not their Messiah, he's their, thank you. He's coming, he's supposed to come, they're ready to go to war, they're willing to go to war, they'll do everything they can to bring him on the scene. And I thought, oh, if only Christians were like that. We want to hang on to the world for what? Do we believe Jesus is coming? Wow. Glory. We can't go by what we see, what we feel, what we hear. We can't go by that. We've got to go by the Word of God. <clears throat> when God says move, we've got to move. You can't wait to see a break in the waves. You can't wait till the flood season is over. You can't wait. I mean, some crazy people just made a run on the banks. But what they didn't know was the banks had over a hundred billion dollars a piece setting in them, and that small group couldn't put a dent on it, but the dent they put on it will hurt all of us. They're not believing God, they're trying to do it in their strength, they're trying to do it in their power, they're trying to do it in their might. But we can do it in the power of God. Amen. We can do it in His strength, we can do it in His might. Glory. Hallelujah. Remember last week I said, look how Warren Buffett. I don't know if you're a Christian, but if you're not, my Bible says you're going to give your money to us Christians. Whether you like it or not, the wealth of the heathens coming to the church. Glory. God said so. Hallelujah. And I believe it. God says it's time to take the training wheels off. To get rid of the pacifier. To throw away the crutches. Yeah. Start moving in faith. Get into the meat. Get out of the milk. Get into the meat. Glory. The meat of the word. In other words, get your feet wet. I mean, how many of us are really ready to get our feet wet? Glory. You know, that water didn't back up until Nathan and Dan first started wading out there. They might even have to get knee deep, maybe hip deep. Went all at once. Bang. There was that wall of jelly. Glory. <coughs> he brought this not when I have to use it, see? Thank you. We got to get our feet wet. Are we willing to do it? Glory. You got to get enough vision. You got to get enough faith. You got to get enough assurance. Tell your neighbor, step in. Step in. It's time to move. It's time to move. <laughs> I know this sounds crazy. Huh? Glory. I know it don't make sense at times. God's ways are not our ways. We can see. You know what they had? And I preached this three, four weeks ago. What'd they have? A word from God. Have you got a word from God? Don't let it go. If he told you to do it, he'll, he'll take you through. He'll, if he told you, you'll be the victors. You need a word from God. 
That's all we need. A word from God. They said on the news the other day, they didn't believe Christians ever heard God anymore. I thought, come to my house. Come to my house. How about you? Is he talking to you? Are you hearing him? Then you got a word. What's his word telling you to do? Are you using that word? Hallelujah. You know, when we got a word from God, we we can sleep just like a baby in the lion's den. Glory. We can be like the three Hebrew children when we walk through the fiery furnace. Now we can bring down Goliath with a little leather strap. Glory. I heard a truth on television last night. Christians, they showed a judge whipping his 16-year-old daughter with a leather strap. And they asked the Supreme Court judge, can he do that or is it child abuse? And the Supreme Court judge said, in all 50 states, you can do that as long as it's not abusive. And yet we saw, spare the rod, spoil the child. I'm glad I was raised in a different type of family. Glory. I didn't like my trips to the woodshed. Glory. Ah. Peter had a word. You remember Peter? What was his word? Watch out into the deep. I've already fished there all night, Lord. Cast your net on the other side. How wide? No telling what kind of a... He didn't have a little... He had a boat. You know, a ship that you can put the boat on. So that's probably 22 foot wide. What in the world does 22 feet make from one side to the other? The Word of God. The Word of God. God didn't say this side. He said that side. Glory. I'll tell you. Ha. There was something finally happening. Peter says, nevertheless, at thy word. And he let down the net. One word changed Peter's circumstances. One word saved all of Israel. Three to five million Jews. Maybe more. Wow. Wow. Peter went from a night of disaster to a night of victory when he got a word from God. I shared with you a few weeks ago the revelation knowledge that God spoke to me concerning midnight. How many remember what it was? It doesn't even last a minute. It only lasts a second. Because when it comes 12 o'clock and it moves one second, we've passed midnight. We're headed towards daylight. We're on our way to victory. We're on our way to the light. Glory. We're not on our way to defeat. We are on our way to defeat before midnight. Glory. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he he should repent. If he said it, he will do it. If he has spoken it, he will make it good. This is God. Don't stand on my word. Stand on God's word. (laughs) Hallelujah. When you step into the water, things begin to happen. Psalms 114, verse 5. David was meditating on these two miracles. The Red Sea crossing and the Jordan River. He's meditating. In other words, he's getting a clearer picture. He wants an understanding 
and what took place here. <coughs> Excuse me. I should have let Randy preach. And here's what he said. What aileth thee, O thou see, that thou flittest, thou Jordan, that thou was driven back. Matter of fact, the Messenger Bible puts this this way. What's wrong with you, see, that you ran away? And you, River Jordan, that you turned and ran off. What's wrong with you? God. God. Our God. Not the God of the Muslims. You know, not the God of these fake churches. Almighty God. Our God. Hallelujah. I don't care what's trying to hit you. I don't care where you're at. I don't care what the circumstances are. I don't care because I have a word from Almighty God this morning. Amen. I'm not compared, you know, I'm not I'm not worried. Glory. I'm going to show you something though. Several several years ago, God gave me and my wife a word. And uh, I preached on this. I bet you half of you forgot it, and the rest of the half aren't doing it. If I'm wrong, I apologize. And we were talking with him. Matter of fact, I was. I talked with my wife. Glory. And I was talking about the abundance that he said was coming into our lives. I wasn't seeing it like I thought I should. Glory. Because he said we're going to have more than, a month, more than enough. As a matter of fact, the word of the Lord said, enough to give it away. Amen. To give it away. Glory. We started standing on that word. I did. I even preached on it. I preached to you. And the Lord said, there's something you're lacking. You see, I listen. I'm learning. What am I lacking, Lord? He said, it has to do with your tithing. I said, with my tithing? Oh, this really blew me away. I said, Lord, you know me. I give 80, 90, sometimes 100%. What's wrong with my tithing? Isn't that a good question? He said, what do you do when you get your money? I said, I put it in the bank. Or I have something to just send right to the bank. He said, oh. Then you haven't put it first. I said, what? He said, you haven't really put it first yet. You know what I do when I get my money now? You go to my house. You can't find it today because we already gave. You come there tomorrow morning, and I'll guarantee you, laying right on my shelf, right on my office, right there is my tithe money for next week. The very first thing I do is put it there and pray over it and bless and honor God. And you know when we started doing that? Wow. I had two credit cards that we'd use to help get things done around here. It added up to $15,000. Six months later, it added up to zero. I'm still getting the same offerings. I'm working on my wife's now. Glory. Glory. Wow. Seemed like a small thing to do. But we began doing it. We began doing it. Because we had a word from God. He said, you got to laugh. Do you know your lacks? Do you know what you're not doing that you think you're doing? 
And yet if you really seek God, He'll tell you. He'll tell you because He wants you to be better. He wants you to be the overcomer. He wants you to be the victor. Glory. <laughs> wow. And everything we did, even a side job or anything, anybody give me, oh, he's done that. But instead of tithing on the side jobs, I gave 100%. Because that was really seed. Whew. Wow. I mean, I was getting by without the side job or the little extra money. So why did I need to use it on myself? Makes good seed. Oh, the, uh, yeah. Paul is saying, I see that. She see, you know, she sees the light every time I preach. <laughs> Glory! <Amen. laughs> Hallelujah. We obeyed God. And as we obeyed God, our debt began to vanish. Glory. We just done almost a thousand dollars worth of work putting up a shed to store the kids' play toys in. <laughs> Glory. And my wife wrote a check out for it. Then put it on a credit card. Hello? Glory. And all started. Just like Joshua. We took the first step. We took the first step. One step begin to move us. One step, begin to bring the miracles. One step, begin to bring the answers. One step. One step. Glory. Hallelujah. Why? That's obedience. That's obedience. All right. I've had people say, oh, I give all my money to the poor. Is that the ones that God told you to give it to? You know, I did that once out in Washington. I learned my lesson. And I've shared that story with you. Two alcoholics that came up carrying their gas can, telling us how they run out of gas, how they needed some money for gas. You could smell their breath. I have a block before they got to you. But we were wise, spiritual, religious spirits. Well, we'd get them to the mission that night. They had to listen to me preach before they got any food. They promised they would come. Well, they did show up after the preaching. <laughs> and they did wave and let us know they'd been there. And the dean of the Bible college asked me the next day, because I really was riding high, and he said, and just what do you think they used the money for? I bought them alcohol. I bought them tobacco. I bought them drugs. Yes, God wants us to help, but we need to know what we're doing. Now when it comes to a Christian, the Bible says we should bless our brothers. Man. No, we shouldn't even have to ask twice. We reach in our pocket and bless them. Bible says if you have it, don't tell them go away and pray. Give it to them. Amen. <laughs> there was a church out in California. They told all their people, if you have a need, take the money out of the offering. And when God blesses you, put it back in. You say, oh, they went broke in a few weeks. No. <laughs> they doubled and tripled in size and all their bills were paid off and God's people were out of debt. Glory. Wow. They had a word from God. Deuteronomy 28, 7. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, but they shall flee seven ways. Amen. That ties in with a scripture that the devil 
can't steal from you. If you don't lose your joy, and most Christians lose their joy, we should be happy. You say, why be happy? The Bible says if you catch a thief, he's got to give it back to you seven times over. I tell Satan, I don't care where you get it from. Go rob a bank. I don't care. You owe me seven times over. Glory. You say, boy, you're crazy this morning. <laughs> One step of obedience. I'm trying to get to the good part. Glory. <laughs> when Ezekiel obeyed the Lord and started prophesying over those dead bones, things changed. Things happened. I believe God spoken to us. I believe we were a bunch of dead bones. We thought we were going someplace. We aren't going very much. Glory. We got a hole out there, two-thirds filled. Glory. I know you haven't got the money. I know who does. God. And when we really believe God, guess what? God will bring it. Glory. I've been through many building programs. And never seen a church go in debt yet. Yet. Why should it happen now? Amen. Glory. Has God changed? No. Oh. Tell your neighbor I'm in process. I'm in process. Hallelujah. The Bible says the priests that were bearing the ark stood on firm ground in the middle of the Jordan. Did you get that? I'll tell you, that's what gets me so excited. They stood on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan. And I believe that's when it backed up. Wow. I mean, they, they were doing the impossible. They'd already been doing the impossible. Now they're really doing the impossible. Tell your neighbor, I'm going through today. I'm getting my miracle today. I'm getting my healing today. I told my wife before the service, we got a miracle service. I said, look at all the guests we got. And watch God multiply all the food afterward. Don't go, stay and eat. I guarantee you we got more than enough. Even dessert. Our God's never failed. He'll multiply it if he has to. I'm getting too old to disbelieve. Glory. Tell your neighbor, my faith is making a way. Now listen. Because somebody, basically the priests, decided to move with their faith. This could be you now. They stepped into the water. They continued to move until they were in the middle of the Jordan River, standing on dry ground. Between five million and maybe more Israelites passed over on dry ground because of their faithfulness. Amen. Because of their faithfulness. Glory. In other words, when you lift God up, when you move with God, when you get out into the impossible, you're going to make way for others to pass over with you. Amen. Glory. The greatest miracle I ever got in my life, one of them, was out in the state of Washington when I knew I had to go forward. And my feet were moving. And I was in my aisle. And I couldn't get out of that aisle. I was trying, but I couldn't. Some lady from the back of the church walked by me. And that was enough. I made my way to the altar. And I got my miracle. Amen. Her faith carried me right to the altar. Your faith 
can carry somebody else to the altar. Amen. Glory. Anybody can praise God over past circumstances or post. But how about right now? Amen. I mean, right now, with all your heart. Glory. Can you give a midway praise? Glory. I mean, can you tell everybody else? I mean, can you get up? I, I, told, I told people, man, I mean, as soon as I woke up and come to my senses in the hospital, and I was trying to convince my daughter that there was bugs crawling all over the walls and the ceiling, and we just crashed into this basement, and the enemy was outside, and she wouldn't buy it for a moment. And she went out and she said to the nurse, I don't know what you got my dad on, but you get that doctor now and you get him off of it now. And some of you don't know my daughter. She's like me. <laughs> she gets awful cold. And things shake when she gets upset. Things shake. Glory. They took me off that morphine. And all at once, my mind would work. And I said, find my pants. She says, you can't go home, Dad. I said, I know, but find my pants. I wanted my billfold. And I got my little black book out, not to call some girl. I had some faith people in that book. The kind of people that no matter what you called with, they would tell you right to your face, I'm standing with you and I will not be moved. Amen. In just a few months, I was out. And they never had a cut on me. Never had a cut on me. And they told my wife, call the family home because he's dying. That was, what, 15 years ago? Glory. I had a word from God. He says, I'll satisfy you, you with long life. I'm not satisfied. Amen. Glory. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I feel like I'm getting more satisfied when you see everything that's going on. But then God reminds me, aren't you going to stick around and see what I do? Don't you want to know what my final program is? Amen. I'll tell you, I get so hungry and so excited. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, you can get the victory. You can get the miracle. Glory. You can get everything God said. I believe that guy with the blind eyes right now, the Spirit of God just spoke. His eyes are open. Look at the time. It's 12.09. I don't know what time it is in England. But your eyes are open. Amen. Somebody's getting off drugs. Somebody's getting uh, over diabetes. Somebody's back that's bothering them. They're getting healed. The miracles are flowing right now. Tell your neighbor, it's time to praise God. It's time to exalt His name. It's time to lift His name up. Glory. It's time to pass on dry ground. Amen. <laughs> Glory. Oh, hallelujah. And you know, when the Israelites passed over, they didn't have the mud between their toes. Think about that. No mud between their toes. I like getting mud between my toes. But this is a miracle. Amen. The river was totally dry. Whew. Oh, wow. It all started because somebody obeyed God. Somebody took one step, one step, one step. I'm at the end of my notes. Glory. Give somebody a nudge. I'm in a nudge. Wake them up. 
Let them know I don't want you to miss your miracle. I don't want you to miss your healing. I don't want you to miss your deliverance. I got a word from God. You want to cross on my word? Come and receive. Come and receive. He, he was sharing with us about the charismatic renewal that took place at Notre Dame. And he said, his father, I never forgot this, not that it's right, but he said his father went. The very first evangelist that the Assemblies of God ever had, a true man of God, he wasn't dead like a lot of the churches are today. And his dad was watching this Catholic priest smoking a big cigar and laying hands on people, and they were getting healed. And Brother Cook said he started sweating. He thought, oh, no. And he noticed his dad was up moving. He thought, oh, no. Here it comes. Here it comes. Nothing. So they got in the car, and he said the first 10 miles was total silence. Total silence. And finally he said, I got up the nerve, and I said, well, Dad, what do you think? He said, I don't understand it, but I know the anointing. That was God. So you may not understand it, but I can guarantee you, it's God. We got communion too. Aren't going to have you stay right in your seats this morning, if you would, please. Are going to pass out the uh, emblems and the so on. Praise God. So.